What's up, guys? We're back. It's Friday, and so you know what time it is. Time for What the Fitness. Like, subscribe, comment. Algorithm. We have a return guest who has not been on here for a while. Dr. Joel Seedman. Let's see what Joel Seedman has to say. I'm gonna guess it's something about 90 degree joint angles and optimization. One of the biggest lies in the fitness industry is that in order to handle deep end range positions, you have to consistently train them. However, there's zero science to substantiate this. And in yeah. fact, the science shows that 90 degree joint angles will not only optimize muscle function and injury prevention, they will actually- So there's text on the screen. It says, this does nothing except reinforce faulty firing patterns. Nebulous term. Please clearly define objectively, Joel, faulty firing patterns. These are buzzwords used to try to rope you in that actually don't mean sh And then it says, and turn you into a neuromuscular zombie. What? Again, nebulous term with compromised force production and force absorption capabilities. Force absorption. What? Like, what? objectively define force absorption, Joel. Like, there's three terms in here that mean absolutely fine nothing handle those deep positions better and if you consistently train them he's saying you can handle those deep positions <laughs> that's what she said you can handle those deep positions better by training at 90 degree joint angles than if you consistently train them in that stretched position so fortunately or unfortunately for our friend joel i actually look at the scientific research rather than just making up and when we look at research on like, for example, squat depth and one rep maximum and the ability to produce force, because guess what? A one rep max squat is basically you producing force. They find that people who train with partial range of motion squat less than people who train with full range of motion when they go to test people at full ranges of motion. File that under the no category. But somehow, Joel would like you to believe that if you just train partially, that somehow that's not only optimal for partial range of motion, it's optimal for when you're going to full range of motion. That's BS. There's no evidence to support what he's saying. In fact, the evidence says the exact opposite thing. This is his shtick. This is how he's become popular by going against the grain and being a contrarian. But if you want the definition of dogmatic, this guy is it. Because everything is about 90 degree joint angles. I don't know how many scientific studies it is going to take before Joel admits that what he's saying is BS. He'll probably never admit it because he cares too much about his pocketbook, but the research very clearly shows that if you want to build as much muscle as possible, you need to train a muscle at long lengths. Now you can train partial range of motion and get similar benefits to full range of motion, but only if it's partial range of motion at long muscle length. So for example, when I'm talking about a curl, if you're doing a long muscle length partial, you're doing the partial in this range of motion. If you're doing a squat, you're going into a deep squat and coming back up only part of the way and then going back down. So in many cases, we're talking about doing a partial in the range of motion that's actually the most difficult where the muscle is stretched. He's talking about doing partials in a shortened range of motion, and he makes a big deal about optimal cross bridging. Yes, at a 90 degree joint angle, you probably have a greater amount of cross bridging and you can produce more force. For example, in a squat, I can produce more force at 90 degrees than I can when I'm in the deep hole on a squat. That's what she said. But that means all for building muscle because you need to train a muscle at long lengths to maximize the recruitment of fibers and maximize muscle building because we have numerous studies to show that putting a muscle at long lengths is needed in order to optimize the hypertrophy response to training. Joel will never admit this because it's not part of his shtick and thus it probably explains why he looks like a wet paper bag. Sorry, I probably shouldn't use an anecdote or ad hominem, but I'm really annoyed by this guy because he is saying sh that is blatantly, not just not supported by any science, directly refuted by numerous human randomized control trials. So I'm sorry, Joel, 
I'm not really sorry. If you would like to be taken seriously, by the way, nobody actually takes this guy seriously who actually have a background in research. This guy's a joke. If you want to be taken seriously, follow the evidence instead of your dogma. And also when people criticize you, stop just telling them to read your book. That's not a good clap back because your book is also full of shit. Just saying, like if you're, if you're saying something full of shit and then your citation is also full of shit, it, it's still something that's full of shit. So anyways, if you guys liked the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel. I'll catch you next week.